pumunta dito sa ano, gamitin daw sa panel. Yung Friday ngayon, wala talagang class. Al alam ko, na nare-require kayo na innovate the classes niyo, balik tayo kanyang friend. And so, mag-start niyo ano, mag-start niyo yung program. First of all, I'd like to introduce you, Haifa. Siya yung executive director ng DEFCON. She'll be introducing DEFCON and also the next speaker. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Right now, I just want to introduce you. Why are you here? Why are you here? The first is I'd like to share to you what is IBM DevCon Technopreneurship Talks. So it is a series of town hall in various in various university campuses among business and computer science schools. So the plan was. Aside from BLS, we will be doing it to other schools as well. So the series highlights successful entrepreneurs and the technology that drives their business. The talk allows our featured businessmen the businessman, the opportunity to inform and interact with an emerging crop of technopreneurs and inspire them to take the lead. So our featured speaker right now is the founder of DevCon, so Developers Connect Philippines. So I have a question, familiar? Who is familiar dito with DevCon, Developers Connect Philippines. Okay, so you should be involved with that. Uh, so what is DevCon? DevCon is a non-profit organization that aims to promote the ID Pinoy talent. So we do events for the community, for the students, and as well as for the professionals as well. So ayun, you should get involved with the community. You meet a lot of people there. Pwede din yung mga mentors. Ayun. And then, so for our next speaker, aside from Mr. Founder, of DevCon Philippines, he is a proven serial entrepreneur with a track record of building successful technology startups. His past entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial endeavors include several companies which grew to profitability, profitability and subsequently sold to major IT players, example, Blue Code Software, an open source application infrastructure company, which was acquired by IBM in 2005. Logic Plays, acquired by Aeona Technologies in 2007, and WebTech, acquired by Intalio in 2009. He is the chairman of the board of directors for Exis Software Labs and Maestro Dev. Guys, please help me welcome Mr. Winston Damarillo. Thank you, very fun. Hey, good morning, everyone. Come on. Are you guys awake? Yes. Yeah? It's, uh, it's always fun to come back to the sun. But, uh, especially coming back, you know, this year we're the first game against Ateneo over the winners, right? yeah. Can we get a quick Animo? Animo Natal! Animo Natal! Alright, good. So I know I'm wearing blue. This is in deference to IBM because they invited me, but I want to guarantee to you that I'm wearing something green. You just don't know where it is yet. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. We're cooking something very much exciting here in La Sala. And I'll announce it to you a little bit later, but uh, I had just had a meeting with Brother Ricky. And uh, I think it's time for La Sala to, be, to shine, not just among the best, but the number one in the country, and hopefully in the ASEAN. So I'll talk about that. Um, while I, um, I can talk a lot about entrepreneurship and also as deep into technology as possible, so I just want to get um, uh, Paul, so more computer science students here. Computer science, coming. I coming myself. Who's in business? Economics, accounting. Okay. Uh, and the bank course. Uh, who's in humanities? Who's studying to be a priest? Is that? Good. Another quick poll. So map come side. Who likes Java? Java. Good. How about Ruby? For the Ruby guys, may Ruby developers perito, yun, only one. We'll get your resume, man. <laughs> uh, how about, what about Python? Which, uh, Python is the hardcore coding. Uh, how about that then? Who likes Microsoft that then? Uh, the door will be right there. Your... <laughs> so, um, so I wanted to talk to you uh, about technology and entrepreneurship, but I wanted to introduce you today to a new concept, which is the new market where you can be successful, in my mind, uh, where we should think about, because it's in our neighborhood. 
Or it's going to be fantastic because the technology will be brand new. We're not fighting against legacy. So I'll share that with you and hopefully we can have a dialogue about it. Uh, but before that, you know, hopefully, very quick story about myself. Uh, I'm, you know, uh, first thing I talk about when I go to the U.S. is I'm an immigrant. Uh, I came here to La Salle, I graduated, uh, let's not talk about dates. Um, I graduated early and then I moved to the States. Uh, I had a great opportunity to work for Intel Corporation. And while I was at Intel Corporation, I actually ended up working at the Intel Architecture Labs. So the Intel Architecture Labs, what we did was we think about the future of technology five years away. In fact, when I started at Intel, we were just inventing technology called G728, which is a voice over internet technology, uh, G720, which is a video over internet technology, precursor of what's known to be Skype today. Right? And this is about 20 years ago. So that's what Intel Architecture Labs do. And then while there at Intel, uh, I really focused on calling myself a technologist. I love technology. The reason why technology is great is that it makes you do things very efficiently. When I was at LaSalle, I was in industrial engineering. So with IE, who's may IE but it does anybody in IE? <coughs> Professor Velasco in IE, ma'am, morning. <laughs> um, the nice thing about IE is it tells you of the big picture. You know, what is the what is the business about and how you can make that efficient. The nice thing about IT is it implements the efficiency. So that's a really cool part of learning computer science. I had a very good, unique opportunities at Intel to also be a venture capitalist. I actually made investments for Intel. And what's nice about that experience is I got to invest in new businesses. So at the time, Bago Pay Open Source, um, uh, computing, we used to call it uh, uh, ASP or Application Service Provider and now SaaS. So I made a great opportunity to invest in Intel. Um, but in 2000, my boss said, hey, you're, you're done here, eight years. Uh, get, out of the get out of the company. We'll help you fund to be your own startup. So I was, uh, built my first startup in 2000. Uh, I had a great opportunity to invest in open source companies. And I'll talk a little bit more detail about the open source companies. Uh, so that's the transition from venture capitalist to entrepreneurship. Uh, and more and more, uh, starting uh, after IBM, uh, it enabled me to have a little bit of financial freedom. I started coming back to the Philippines. And I begin to understand not just the good part about coming home, but the exciting part of building businesses here. So throughout this talk, I will encourage you to build global businesses, but not much beyond ASEAN. And I'll, I'll explain what that is. I mean, where, where, where's ASEAN and what, what are the things that are exciting? So I'm spending a lot more time as a global citizen. Uh, I'm a part of the World Economic Forum. I spend time doing that. Uh, for young kids who wants to be a part of it, we have a program called the Global Shaper. If you're interested, at some point, you can play email and you can, you can do that. Uh, I also am a participant of the APEC, the Asian and Asia Pacific Economic Council. We chaired the innovation group this year, and we're hoping a lot of the innovation research and action plans actually will be done in La Salle. And then finally, uh, geeks uh, that do open source are global by nature. So I strongly encourage you guys, if you want to be the best in software development, join open source projects. That's the only way for you to measure if you're good enough, if you can handle it, not just the writing of the code, but the entire culture of creating software. Right? In the Philippines, we always just consume. It's good to, to create also every now and then. So that's kind of the background. I'll go fast for this. The nice thing about the opportunity to build companies, the most exciting part about that is to monetize it or to sell it. And I'll just talk about just one example. My first startup called Blue Code Software, I just left Intel. Um, in, so it's, the lesson for me there is that when I left Intel in 2000, everything is good. <laughs> it's bubbling, everything's just happening well. And I was at Intel, which is a good brand, and I was a VC, which is a coveted career. So when I built my first startup, I actually failed. Blue code did not work right away. First blue code died. And the reason for that is, at some point in your life, with, uh, wherever you start, you become arrogant, you take things for granted, and you just don't do the hard, the hard work. So blue code, number one, did not work, the first version of it. Um, we raised $10 million when we formed it. Uh, I hired 50 people right away, and then I built the business plan after. 
so that's the, the one thing that you want to think about is that without hard work, things really don't, don't materialize. It was only when um, I decided that uh, whatever my startup will be, it's first and foremost going to need to become a business before it's a startup. Right? The one thing I really worry about in the Philippines is everybody's doing this team startup. Like it sounds cool and I do cool stuff, but nobody can articulate how it becomes a business. I have a personal experience on why that's, that does not work. Right, so whether it's a tech startup or a cool startup or an you know, SNS startup or a social network startup or anything like that, for as long as nobody tells you that this is how I'm going to make money, this is how I'm going to grow, and this is how I'm going to return equity to my shareholders, it's not a business, it's just an idea. So I'm hoping that here at La Salle, we'll, we'll pay a special attention to turning ideas into businesses. And what I've learned from La Salle, and we're uniquely positioned to do this, no other university in the country can do this, is the combination of business and technology. Right? And that's what we want to accelerate here. Right? Start from that advantage and make it even better. Because I can tell you for sure that's the, the hard part. So with Blue Code, the second time I raised it, I built Blue Code, so I didn't want to give up. Uh, I mortgaged my house, I sold my Intel stocks, and then I couldn't afford developers in the States anymore, I came to the Philippines and hired developers here. That's how I met Mike. Um, only then, when life was a little bit tougher, when the pressure is on, and in fact, I was down to two more payrolls before the company was shut down, you actually really feel what a company is about, what entrepreneurship is, is all about. If you're not struggling and it didn't, Hard work doesn't come. You, you, you tend to not build the right thing. So, long story short, we took it from that bootstrap to profitability. When we were profitable, we were funded by a venture capitalist again. We kept the money for only 11 months. And on the 11th month, we have uh, offers from Computer Associates, Oracle, and IBM to buy the company. And this is the second part of the story that I haven't shared to anybody else is that IBM was actually not the highest bidder in terms of buying the company. Um, and when the company was acquired, Computer Associates was going to pay us whatever it takes to get the company. But when I started talking to my team, my engineers, you guys, right? The engineers, people that build the product, they basically said, sir, you know, we really work hard for this technology. We don't want to go to Computer Associates and put you know, our software to the grave. Mm -hmm. Right. They they pushed me hard to work at IBM because IBM will take what we have and make it greater. Right. And there's a process at IBM called blue washing. And blue washing is actually a process on an acquiring company that says, number one will let you be based on who you are because you're good at that. Number two will give you the resources you need. So the advantage of your technology is magnified. And number three, we want you to feel good about what you do, so you continuously do business with IBM. And the nice thing about IBM compared to CA and Oracle is that it was a relatively small acquisition, not billions, right? It's, hundred, it's, it's a lot of millions, but not billions. But the, the one thing that's consistent with IBM is, you know, you meet Steve Mills, Robert LeBlanc, Marie Week, right? These are the senior executives of IBM. They all come down to my 20 headcount startup and met everyone. Right. So this is important because I want you guys to think and love the startup you build. So when you when you build the startup and you fall in love with it, you build the right technology, and even at the time where you start to cash out, that you want to continue that, that affection. Right? So if you think about it that way, you'll naturally just get started. So that was kind of one great experience. Uh, I continue to see potentially seek that every time you build startups uh, going forward and you know it's once you experience one once you be a part of a member of a group that has exited a startup it becomes a big thing you, you'll start building companies over and over again it's it's fun it's like gaming even. so i did that uh sold another company uh, called logic place to to uh eventually read that and now uh web type so every two years i was building and selling companies uh, I still have a lot of companies. Uh, there's a new startup called Acolyph Storage. Uh, Acolyph uh, is involved in big data. Uh, we haven't announced it 
we're gonna dip, dip, uh, we're actually gonna feature it at LaSalle first. Uh, we're working to collaborate with LaSalle Computer Science to bring uh, big data into LaSalle. And we're doing a project called ULA, the University Learning Acceleration Platform. And that infrastructure of big data will be brought here, the Henry C. Building. Uh, we're gonna actually break a replica of the internet in LaSalle. So anybody who wants to build natural language processing research, <coughs> you want to do your own search engine, you want to do uh, analytics on health, we can start doing that, so stay tuned. We're gonna ask some of you to volunteer and help. Um, Morph Labs is a cloud computing company. Uh, it's one of the top five in the world. Uh, stay tuned, there are gonna be great announcements about Morph Labs, so, you know, maybe it'll be number four on the list. Uh, I built that here, it was started in Cebu, and it's uh, currently run in Manila. Uh, Exist Global is the, our labor of love company. It's the company that always builds startups. It's where everything starts, it's where we incubate, it's where we hire engineers, uh, it's, where, it's where we teach you open source, it's where we teach you entrepreneurship, uh, and it's also the place where the best and the biggest companies in the Philippines go to have their solutions built. So for instance, uh, St. Luke's entire health platform in digital services is built by ZIS. Uh, Banco de Oro's uh, big data platforms built by ZIS. Uh, and a lot more companies do that. So at some point, if you're interested in uh, working for a software company as a starting point, uh, we would love to come back and talk to you about it. And then uh, MeisterDev uh, is another software company. Basically takes open source methodology of writing software and bring that to the enterprise. So I currently continuously build startups uh, every other day, I have a new startup idea. Uh, every other um, opportunity, uh, we're looking to invest in startups. And starting September 20, that investment in startups will predominantly start here at La Salle. And, and that's kind of the exciting part for me, at least. It feels like it's coming home. Um, other things that you do, um, this is a joke in the States. If you want something done, give it to the busiest guy. Um, it looks like I'm doing a lot of things, and it's just a lot of things because they're all related. All about technology, all about innovation, all about improving society. So I, I work with the World Economic Forum, I work with APEC, uh, I help design the cloud infrastructure of the United States uh, government, and uh, also part of the field uh, for nonprofits here. And then from a geek standpoint, I still actually write code for my companies. Every now and then they don't accept it, but I still write the right code. So open source projects, I'm board member of Eclipse, Apache Software Foundation, OpenStack, and then this new storage technology called Ceph uh, that you should uh, get to know. And then entrepreneurship, uh, I was very fortunate to help uh, think about DevCon, so high final team, they're growing. They're actually, DevCon uh, uh, touches about five to 10,000 students every year to encourage you to be in the tech um, industry and be good at it. Hack to Hatch is a Filipino homegrown style of startup development. It's built by Filipinos for Filipinos, uh, and it's the best in Filipino entrepreneurs in the world come to the Philippines to do one-to-one -one mentorship. That's the other thing we're doing. So that's kind of just background. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the ASEAN. Uh, who's familiar about the countries within the ASEAN region? It's not a misspelled Asian. <laughs> it actually stands for the Association of Southeast Asian Nation. And what's significant about the ASEAN, when you guys think about this from an entrepreneurial standpoint, is the ASEAN is a region of 10 countries that's forming a union similar to the, the, the European Union that has about 600 million people within the cluster that is also the fastest growing economy in the world from a region standpoint. The other thing that's interesting about the ASEAN region is that it's not China, it's not India, it's not the EU, and it's not North America. It's got its own flavor. And that flavor looks like us. And that group looks like it's something that Filipinos can lead. We can set the example. We can be the best country in ASEAN. So it's an opportunity. It's something you should think about. Now the other part of ASEAN that's really exciting is that as a region, 
And when you think about digital consumption, Facebook, Twitter, like, you know, she's not paying attention doing Twitter over there, right? Really focused. So we, we use this a lot now. Um, the ASEAN region, I'm making fun of your classmates. Um, the ASEAN region is the most penetrated in terms of digital. So compared to even um, the United States, compared to even Europe, we use digital a lot more than anybody else. It will shape the way we conduct business and it will shape the way we entertain ourselves. So that's an opportunity area for us. If you look at it in chart, this is actually the chart, right? About the ASEAN red digital readiness, we're currently here, year three. But if you look at it in a very short time, we're gonna move from what they call digitally hungry region to a digitally driven nation. In other words, everything we do is driven by the ability of either a service provider, a vendor, an entertainment company to connect you, not just analog, but digital. So it opens a new doors and it now for the first time creates an opportunity that is not like the United States. We don't have to try to become Americanized anymore, right? We're gonna become our own consumer. You guys have the opportunity to create the next products and services around that. If you look at this as the largest consumer of digital assets, and if you think about the world today in 60 seconds, right? Millions of emails are sent, about 168 million email per minute is sent, right? There's about 100,000 posts, um, the other interesting parts of it. Uh, 370,000 minutes of Skype call is happening. But this is the internet today. I mean, imagine if this is how intense the internet is today, and we are the largest consumer, and we're the fastest growing, this is only gonna grow, right? And so if you like to be an entrepreneur, look at all your opportunities. It's big, it's massive, and more importantly, it's exciting. And it's about you, because and I'll, I'll skip this to a couple of points. Because this digitally energized economy, just, just in the next few years, by 2020, will have an age group of 30. More than 50% of ASEANs will be under 30. Right? Old school goes away. Right? Now you're building products and technologies, and software and entertainment and gaming built for your age. Like think about where you are today, right? When you graduate and the kind of work you get to, to do and the kind of businesses you get to build and the kind of consumers are gonna use it. It's gonna be fun, right? I don't have, you know, in my generation, I have to explain to my mom how to do a Skype call or what the hell is like on Facebook. <laughs> in your case, it will be the norm. People are gonna look for it. Nobody's gonna buy anything without looking at Yelp. Right? Nobody's gonna go somewhere without mapping it in Google Maps, right? It's gonna be a different world, and it's going to become the most important foundation for <coughs> computer science students, computer engineering students, combined with next generation business planners, next generation entrepreneurs, to build a platform on. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be really exciting. <coughs> so, fundamentally, where are we? We're building stage. Uh, when you're building the foundation for digital infrastructure, it's really like building the first roads, the first airports, the first terminals, the first right, to digital economy. So what are the infrastructure pillars of the digital economy? Number one is the actual compute infrastructure, cloud computing. And the model of cloud computing is Amazon. Best in the world, open the light bulb for us to do it. It's the idea that Compute resources are infinitely available and then programmatically accessible. I can get as many compute as I need and I can do it by just a few computer API commands. Power's now in your hands, right? Before, you used to buy very expensive computers from IBM and from HP and from um, NEC and that's a barrier. Before you can even start your first business, you have to buy that today for less than 50 cents a minute, you can rent the server. 
as big as the biggest competitor. So infrastructure and cloud computing is number one, right? And that's something that we're going to start here in the country. It's something you'll have direct access at LaSalle as best as possible, the fastest you know, ability to do that. Learn that. That's the road. That's the railway for, for digital infrastructure. The second is, if we're going to be connected digitally, we're sending 168 million emails, right? If we're doing 100,000 posts and tweets every minute, and that generates a lot of data. And a lot of data can tell you a lot of things, right? From patterns of traffic to understanding you know, epidemics and health issues. Uh, and in fact, at Google, they can actually predict if a couple is about to get a divorce just by the pattern of their credit card purchases. <laughs> right, those kinds of stuff, it's exciting, right? <laughs> so you can create a lot of models for that. It's really kind of uh, models to do that. So it, it, it leverages cloud computing. It requires data scientists. So this data scientist is what I consider the next generation geek. It's like somebody with ex that's extremely, extremely good in math, but also very insightful about social issues. The unique combination, right? And if you master this, this is the highest paid job in the world, averaging $200,000 a year. It's hard but it's something that, that everybody can leverage. It's very exciting to do that. And the reason why you get paid a lot of money is it becomes a crystal ball for the business, right? If you can predict things, you're valuable. If you know that just on a pattern that there's like five people getting fevers in the same region that you know, an epidemic's about to occur, that's, that's important, right? If you see trending that people are complaining too much about Twitter feeds, about a precedent that an overthrow is about to happen, that's valuable. So from that standpoint, at the stage we're in, because we're consuming so much digital information, and because there's universality, almost all of us, right, get a text, write a you know, tweet, check Facebook, post a, a, a photo, this now becomes the digital pulse. You know, when you, when you watch the old movies like The Matrix, right, predicting behavior can now be actually done just by big data. But something that, that we're gonna start doing more here in La Salle. And in order to do big data, you need big infrastructure, and obviously we'll do that first. But imagine if you have a big infrastructure in La Salle, imagine if you have a copy of the internet here, right? Imagine if you have a record of the entire weather patterns for the last 20 years, right? What can you do with that? How much creative can you get? Right? That's, that's the world for you, it's exciting. We don't have access to that when I was here. Finally, is you put this thing to action. You build the roads, you understand the issues, then you change the way people do things today, right? Today, you go to the groceries to buy goods, right? Today, um, you have, you know, when, when airlines are not as online, you have to go to and queue up to get stuff, right? Today, you have to ask your friends where you wanna eat, right? In the future, that's gonna change, right? So the, the power of infrastructure coupled with insight can provide the next generation in interactions between people, between businesses, between countries, between, between um, you know, human beings. And with that, there's different ways to do things. You can do things like shared rights, you can do things like recommendation systems, uh, you can reshape e-commerce, and if our conglomerates here in the Philippines are not careful, it will replace them. Right, there will be a different kind of businesses that comes up, and then it will be your time. Right? There's no more Facebook to be built. Zuckerberg already figured it out. Right? Now you have a new sandbox, a new playground. Right? Build the next one. And to do this, you don't have to go to the States. ASEAN is a big economy with big consumption with big use of data. So do it here. Where the Philippines is not a second class supplier, the Philippines can become the first, the best, the most admired supplier. And if we were able to do that in the Philippines, La Salle has to take leadership. There's no other university in the country that can have a combination of and skills of entrepreneurship and, and technology. Nobody else, right? So it's our job to do this. And we're gonna combine our efforts to do that. But that's very exciting. A lot of things are happening here. Um, 
Remember, as you do this, you're not only building startups, um, putting together infrastructure, putting together insight. It's actually a national requirement. Right? The last thing we want to do is run our businesses in Amazon in Seattle or in Singapore. The last thing we want to do is put our data in Seattle at Amazon or in Singapore. Right? And the last thing we want to do is buy all our goods from Amazon in the United States. As a country, we need to build our own capability. Right? We need to own our digital destiny. So if you build companies in this model, you're not only creating wealth for yourself, you're actually collectively helping create wealth for the country as well. So it makes it extra special to, to put the effort. It's really exciting to do that stuff. So back to LaSalle, right? We're known to be a university and a student population of actions. We talk less. They're, they're better at English over there, Kalayan, but we act more here in LaSalle, right? And so with that, what we wanted to do, and I want to invite all of you, is to create in the spirit of animo, right? Taking action from the sun. And in order to help you do that, uh, it's your chancellor, president, uh, a few other leaders of LaSalle, the board, is actually going to put together a plan so that there's a place for us not just to create technology, but to converge our ideas, combining entrepreneurship, business, finance, sciences, engineering, you know, and an ecosystem that allows you to do that. And then your alumni is eager to help you. Not just to mentor you, but to fund you when there's great ideas, or to connect you to other schools like MIT. And I spent a lot of time doing that as well. So with that, I just want to open this thing for those conversations I hope more and more happens here in the South. I know there's already a lot of work going on with uh, Dickie's leadership and what they're trying to do in the entrepreneurial space. Uh, and finally, I want to thank you guys. It's good to be home, and it's good to meet all of you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Sir Wilson. And for our next part of the program, I'd like to introduce to you the program manager of IBM, uh, she is a bis BS Business Admin of UP Diliman. She also got her Master's in Applied Business Economic from University of Asia and the Pacific. She also got her ma Master's in Business in London School of Business. And she worked in tech for uh, her entire career with PLDT, Ericsson, Emerson, and currently with IBM. Everyone, please help me welcome Ms. Mona Valuz. For me, can you please smile for all of my middle-aged Twitter friends? <laughs> and I'd like them to see how enthusiastic uh, Lasal is about entrepreneurship. Right? Okay, smile. Right. All right, great, perfect. <laughs> so I'm very happy to be. Today. I, I love being in the university, primarily because I think the next game-changing ideas are, are happening in the universities today. I think your generation, the youth, is you have by design the resilience, the positive attitude, the, the chutzpah, the lakas ng loob that every entrepreneur should have. And uh, believe me, I, I, I'm ashamed to admit it, but as you grow older, you get a little bit more scared because you're, you're getting more realistic. So this is the time that you have to fuel the fire, so to speak. So uh, I think your generation is also very lucky because you have guys like Winston who is defining the vision of what you can and should be. And also the, the, there are so many actors, so many workers within this space that are giving you the right tools, the right inspiration, the right advice to kind of get you on your way. Whether it be from a technology perspective or a business perspective, there is a bigger uh, ecosystem that uh, supports you today. Uh, like Kaifa said, my name is Mona Veluz, 
and I work for IBM. I am the program manager for the IBM Innovation Center, which is one of a of several uh, global uh, facilities designed to help uh, young startups and students understand uh, technology in general, and for those who are interested in pursuing specific uh, opportunities, we can even help them port over to IBM Technologies. So it's one of those spaces where uh, where it's, it's a playground really. We have a data center there, and uh, LaSalle is especially lucky because one, the technology manager for the facility is one of your instructors, the tall gentleman right there in black and orange, Dr. Pantola, Dr. Alexis Pantola, actually works with the IBM Innovation Center. And he's one of those uh, guys who are at the forefront helping uh, young startups in, in technology. Okay, uh, in my generation, which is uh, maybe, uh, maybe the same as Winston, I don't know, a little older, but back in the day, um, it's actually ironic because I'm a business major. But when I was in school, entrepreneurship was not ingrained in our, in our uh, curriculum. Uh, I had friends who could look at financial statements and cough up performance indices without you know, using paper, like savants. But they cannot raise 20,000 pesos for our org to save their lives. So they know the business. They, they, we, were, we were trained to be employees. You know, you you work hard, you work for 10 years, but then you do your startup, then you do your thing. But that is not, I mean, we've seen today that that's not exactly the, the right, uh, I wouldn't call it right, but it's not, it's not a culture of innovation. It's not a culture of, um, of exciting, game-changing ideas that, they, that you were cultivating back then. So I think your, your generation is lucky. Uh, one of the things that uh, a lot of experts uh, find when talking to young, young, um, young adults like ourselves, so young startups, what do they need? They usually start with a big idea, right? So they want to solve pressing social issues. They want to do something different from how it's being done today. You want to disrupt. You want to be a disruptor. And of course, you want to make money. But then you, you think about how you're going to do that. And as students, very often, it doesn't come naturally to you. You usually need the, the mentorship, the training, the guidance of uh, business majors or, or your, your, your mentors here in school, uh, mentors who are already in industry to kind of help you and guide you on your way. So this is really what, uh, what the, um, the industry is trying to help you with, with the many programs that are lined up today. Uh, I think Winston gave you a, a, an idea of all of the techpreneurship tech uh, activities that are headed by his organization. And he's not alone, that's the great thing. It's a big community. You have individual companies having their own programs to fuel uh, entrepreneurship, techpreneurship specifically. Uh, what I'm here to do today is give you an idea of what IBM is doing. Uh, it's really great that uh, Winston is your is I'm, I'm speaking after Winston because there's that relationship with IBM. He made his first hundred million with uh, with IBM, and we're glad and we're very proud as Filipinos that his code is actually embedded in one of the biggest selling middleware that we have today, which is WebSphere. So. That is exciting for us. We, when we go to universities, we always put Winston's uh, face on our our deck because it's a it's a great story. I mean, it's a great Filipino uh, success for IBM and for uh, for for Filipino in general, of course. All right. So IBM uh, realized the need to tap into the potential of the entrepreneurs, the students, the young startups and created in 2011 what we call the Global Entrepreneurship Program. Um, the face of the Global Entrepreneurship Program is the IBM Innovation Center. That's really where we start getting people in. That's really where we start giving you the guidance, giving you the training on technology, and hopefully a little bit of the inspiration. That's why we're here. That's why we try to uh, talk to you and understand what you want to see in the marketplace. Um, in our, in our 
um, discussions, we are very excited because aside from the big, you know, the, the Animo Labs is very exciting. That's that's a, it's like you have a, your own very own your very own bad computer. Because it's this big giant thing that can process a lot of data, so much potential. You can predict stuff. Isn't that exciting? One of the things is that IBM is also pushing for is analytics. I don't know if it's been rolled out in the sale, but um, we have tied up with Chet to deliver analytics education to the um, to the universities and colleges in the Philippines. So there's an MO, MOA already in place. And over the summer, we did a big series of trainings for university professors, where we train them in uh, descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. So it's now, we're, we're hopefully we're, we're, uh, we're enabling the next generation to be data scientists. And uh, this is really an exciting time. Um, beyond the education, beyond the chica chica, what, uh, what does IBM offer to the young entrepreneur? Well, we do have what we call the smart camp. It is a, uh, for those who are already established, for example, you already have a prototype. You already have your own, um, you're, you're already registered with, uh, with the SEC, you have the right documentation. This is really where we start to help you develop your product and help you go to market. The Smart Camp is one of uh, the programs which then gives you the opportunity to get capital. I said, if, if this was a food cart business, there's mommy and daddy that you can ask for, you know, to ask money for. But uh, in, I guess, in a different playing kind of field, there needs to be that interaction with uh, companies and institutions that can help you grow your business better. All right, and once you are uh, a working ISV, our group actually also does a lot of investments with our partners, with our partner uh, entrepreneurs. We do go to market events with them. We actually fund their marketing campaigns. Uh, one one example of our, my favorite uh, Startup who we helped last year. They, their product is not sexy. Yeah? They have an accounting system. And you're like, what accounting system? That's like lame. But we have QuickBooks for that. But the unique thing about this company is that they're the only ones who have had a 100% approval rating from BIR. So their customized application was very unique. They had a unique selling proposition. And they went to IBM. We helped them port over to uh, IBM Technology. They even went to our smart camp, which is in Singapore. They were there, they met with capitalists. They, they got into a discussion on how they can grow their business. And they came back and continued to in, engage IBM in, in uh, helping them develop their marketing, helping them de develop their product line. Once they heard about a new upcoming technology, oh, we want to be enabled in that. We want to be enabled in cloud. We want to be enabled in um, your analytic solutions. So it's it's a partnership that can stretch from the time you are young to the time that you're a mature uh, ISV. All right. And this is not only in the Philippines. I mean that that program is a global program, and the directive to be engaged with startups actually start from the top. Junior Rometi, our uh, CEO, our uh, chairman and president, appeared in VentureScape in San Francisco this year. And her message was the startups are the ones who are going to change the IT landscape. Uh, we are in a point in time where mobility, cloud technologies, uh, big data solutions, analytics are enabling you guys, the guys who don't have access to the big sexy equipment to do your work now, not wait for when you actually have money to buy the equipment, like, like Winston said. And over the, the span of time that the program has been, that the IPM Global Entrepreneurship Program has been launched, we have engaged about 150,000 startups in 120 countries, and we have released about $91 million in VC funding. Uh, we've had several smart camps. The smart camp is a competition, um, it's a global competition. 
in the Philippines, we start it's because um, we do have a, uh, I guess, um, that uh, lack of uh, companies who have come to us with that interest to develop um, IBM gen, IBM centric solutions. We've had one-on-one -on -one recruitment, but for many other countries, it is usually a, a national competition. At any rate, we go to a regional finals. This year, it's going to be in KL in October. This is going to be one day before the uh, the Global Entrepreneurship Summit of President Obama. And it is there where we're going to uh, find the next company that we're going to um, move up to the Global Finals. So I'd like, I'd like you to meet a few companies who uh, who we have been working with. So the company is Localytics. We're an analytics provider for mobile applications. Uh, I'm co-founder and CEO. We help the developers of iOS, Android, HTML5, and other smartphone and tablet apps better understand who their users are so that they can make more uh, more profitable and better applications. My name is Paul DiMartico, and I'm co-founder and CEO of Profiteer. We provide our clients, retailers, and manufacturers uh, with competitor prices and stock availability information. What Sprossel does is we work with the legitimate pharmaceutical producers to uh, attach technology to their products such that consumers can easily verify the pills that they buy from pharmacies to avoid buying a fake drug. So I, I'm the first time entrepreneur and it's it's a learning curve. Are we going to be able to raise sufficient funds to build this company? Probably the biggest fear, it's not having paying customers. You don't always know what uh, your exact next move is, but you have to be flexible enough to, to make it quick. We're now integrated in well over 10,000 apps. Uh, we have revenue from some of the top companies uh, in the world. Over a million consumers uh, text in to our service to validate the products that they're buying. We have a new client coming on board where we're going to be validating car parts. We definitely see Profitero becoming the provider of the service to maybe 50 or 70, 80 percent of top 500 retailers. Infrastructure, it's weak. Filipinos can come up with sexier products than that. Right? Yeah. yeah! I know uh, in a lot of the hackathons and uh, camps and boot camps that we, we've, uh, we've seen, we've, got, we've gotten ideas that were really exciting and game-changing and innovative. It's really now up to you guys to kind of take it to the next level, to see your vision through. And hopefully now we'll find uh, you know, a few of those guys here today. Um, these are the details on how you can learn more about the, the IBM Global Entrepreneurship Program. But, um, and, you know, you can take, take note of that now. I think that's the, the most important thing that I'd like to leave you with. And this is really more my personal insight. My name is Mona Lisa. I hate the name, but that's really my name. And over my life, I've, all, I've, I've read, you know, the Vinci theories and the, you know, concept of Renaissance living. And one of the things that the, the Da Vinci actually said is the true Renaissance person is peaceful in the face of a change and the for, in the face of ambiguity. So I think being a top a techpreneur <coughs> is being a Renaissance person. Is uh, it's a calling, it's a vocation, it's not a thing to do. It's not one of your options. But it's really a, it's really a, a personal belief 
It's really a calling, a commitment. And if you are one of those persons, I hope that, you know, I wish you well. I wish you all the luck. And uh, with guys like Winston being your, uh, your uh, angel here in La Salle, I am looking forward to great things coming from Animo Labs and the La Salle University. Thank you very much. We will be having a panel discussion with our featured entrepreneurs and also the technopreneurs from the Sal, and they would be able to ask questions to our featured entrepreneur, which is Sir Winston. Also, everyone can ask from here. Wait, uh -huh. Actually, the question should be coming from the audience, okay? Because the experience is going to be shared by the four gentlemen up here. So, I can introduce them because they look familiar and I don't know them. So I'm going to ask each of them to, to talk about. I'll ask each of them to talk about why they're up there. Okay? We all know about Winston, but not the, not the rest. So I'll start. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning guys. I'm Arvin El Urubia. I'm the founder of High Ninja Business Solutions. Uh, basically, we cater CCTV integration to your uh, to small uh, to micro businesses here in the Philippines. And recently, uh, I started a new startup, uh, Corner Data, which I uh, we able to participate in the uh, biggest hackathon at Erie and at, and uh, just this recent last April. At uh, we are one of the Final twenty, uh, twenty, final twenty finalist of idea space from uh, Smart. So uh, I'm glad to be here and uh, yeah, just uh, ask questions for us guys and hopefully we can add to your uh, ins some inspiration to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alde Gergonia, uh, 40 years CS student, and um, 
we jo we joined the last um, startup weekend in Manila and we want the people's choice. Alright, so hi, I'm David Marquez. I'm also CSSD for like I said, me and Ade, if you want Startup Weekend, we're creating this startup now. We're still, we're in the process of creating it now. We're in a list where you can keep people um, when they work there or something. And then we'll put it in one website. And um, I'm also part of, like Ade was saying, I was also an, uh, an intern for Idea Space, but from Smart over the summer. So, Okay, so open to questions. Okay, maybe I'll ask the first question. We have a lot of good thesis uh, projects here at uh, here at LaSalle. As a matter of fact, I've mentored several of them. Uh, I brought some uh, thesis projects to the Intel, uh, all the way to the Intel Asia Pacific uh, competitions. They've won. They've gone to um, to UC Berkeley for the global uh, Intel global challenge finals, they didn't make it there, but one of the things that we see here in the sun is that once they're done with the thesis, a lot of the students just want to go and get a job, join the family, family etc. So maybe my first question is, that's a situation that, it's too bad, those are good ideas. How do we, what do you suggest in situations like that? Do we get, do we get somebody else to carry the ball on that? project who is not one of the founders or how do we motivate founders to get into something like that? So whoever, whoever some ideas. Yeah for me uh, in that case so uh, we need I believe we need a Mani Pacquiao of entrepreneurship in the Philippines. I always say to whenever I talk to to someone who wants to start a startup uh, that uh, we Philippines need a Manny Pacquiao in entrepreneurship. We need an inspiration. We know Mark Zuckerberg, we know Bill Gates, but they are in states. We need someone that we can really appreciate, we can we can uh, connect to, just like Manny Pacquiao. When we saw Manny fighting in the TV, we somehow in our in our inner selves, we want to become like him in another way. So if that someone that, in, that one inspiration will come up in the future. Most probably, uh, future students that will uh, create their projects will eventually will have uh, the idea that what they are doing in their college in school, school project will most probably can can become a company. Uh, so, if ever I want to be a Manny Pacquiao in the, here in the Philippines, but if you are the one, if if, if I am not that person, if you are that person, guys, well, I will be happy also. So, so, kung sino man sa inyo yun dyan, uh, labas tayo, labas niya na yan kung sino yung mali pakiwan natin. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, just the model in the U.S. No, that, that could work is that, um, and I was talking to the Chancellor about this this morning, is that Lasalle is not really linked to businesses as much as LaSalle should, right? Because ideas are valuable. In fact, ideas generated by students are great because typically they don't easy to big companies in. So in the States, uh, Stanford, MIT, Harvard, they have a very strong relationship to the business. If a drug manufacturer wants to figure out you know, the next improvements to their drug, they work with the university. If a bank here wants to understand big data, they work with the university. So that linkage will propagate the model. And just to give you an example, uh, my thesis here at LaSalle is actually to develop the most efficient route solution for the Philippine National Oil Company. So we did it, we get the World Gold Medal Award for it, and PNOC actually used it. So the responsibility goes two ways. One is uh, the university needs to put a concerted effort to connect the businesses. But then for the students, if you're gonna do something hard, and if you want to be the best at it, this should this should last longer than my thesis. So just be a little bit more creative, a little bit more enthusiastic of what you do. Make sure this, if you, you know, like I said, if you're gonna spend the effort, make sure it's the best it can possibly be. If you take that attitude, you'll eventually be my Pacquiao. 
he trains hard, right? He's focused on making the best in his craft, and he con continuously improves himself. So take that attitude as a student that whatever you do, right, has to be the best you can possibly make it, and start here. The thesis is a good place to, to start. All right, so, oh, I'm, I'm still undergoing thesis. So who of you are undergoing thesis now? Like, um, currently. Some of you will have So, like, for me, because like, I'm taking thesis now, it's not just I'm going to be working it for a year and a half. So, um, why not use the effort you, you did on that thesis? And then you progress on it. You already did something. Not, I don't want to just drop my thesis and say, okay, I'm done with school and I'm graduating. I look for a job. You really put some effort. So for those of you thinking are about to pick one on the topics, pick something that you want to do, not just in your stay in the sub, but something you want to do in afterwards, something interesting. Uh, you know, never, you never know. Like you could be that could be your job now. Uh, you're doing something you're really fun, something that you love. At the same time, it's something in your field as well. Um, for me to answer the question, for me it's like the more of the general. Um, thinking of people because um, uh, some of the subjects here are more geared towards more research or towards more software programming. So when we look at it, um, the things we do are just for for research purposes or just for software um, programming pur purposes for other companies. And what I like about Al-Basan now is they give us um, opportunities to um, I mean, Convert those ideas, convert those research, um, research ideas to businesses like giving us um, subjects like innovate, and um, and I think there's going to be a business uh, master's program in computer science and yeah, I'm that. Okay, I, I think what you said when you said we need the money, Pacquiao, we were looking for a role model that all of the young students can look up to. Isn't Winston your role model, or are we looking for somebody who's younger, uh, more <laughs> 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 prettier? <laughs> Give us some ideas on that. Like, who, who could be a role model, for example? Uh, yeah, uh, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, Winston and Dado is uh, one of my inspiration here in the Philippines. I knew them because I, I already on the startup uh, world, or uh, what I'm trying to say is, I met them because I searched for them. But we need someone that uh, that will inspire others, even though they are not yet looking in that career path. I, what I'm trying to say is, maybe we need someone that's as famous at not as famous at Mark Zuckerberg, but as inspirational in term in terms of in terms of PR or. Uh, yeah, just that's the difference. Uh, I knew them because I searched for them. We need someone that is already in the pillar. That when someone look at them watching TV, wow! When I when uh, just like uh, if you're just in high school, you can say that I want to be some that I want to be someday just like that guy. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, we can put on. To me, it's not a person, it's right? supreme system. And that's what I wanted to, to really bring into the salad. It's not, uh, there's a few really good guys here. I don't know if you know a uh, kid named Jolo Balvin, right? He's, he's, you guys know Jolo? Who knows Jolo? Oh, he could be a Manny Pacquiao. You know, he developed on his master's thesis, uh, technology for natural language processing, shortening uh, news items into text. It's a La Salle product, right? So, yeah, and it's a great technology. So, to add to that, that's, so LaSalle should celebrate that, right? So, where is LaSalle saying congratulations to our graduate for doing this? Yeah. Ruth, it's on your list, huh? Yeah. Now, where is the relationships here that, that talks to our alumni and say, hey, you should use his technology at BDO, right? Or at RCBC, right? Where's the tech, you know, there's, there needs to be an active advocacy. That's the important part. And the active advocacy 
it starts with the student because you guys have the most energy, right? But it's made possible in a framework by the faculty and the administration. But it's almost time, to your point, to create the system identity for LaSalle, right? Do, do, you want, do we want LaSalle to be the best entrepreneurial school in the country, why not? Yeah? Nothing else can be better, right? So we should do that. So you guys know Archie Choa? Yes. yes. Okay. So even something like that, something as simple as that, now even though Skin Ninja is a bit catered to DLSU, but that idea alone, he created something, he saw the need, he made it, everyone's using it now. And then, you know, later on, we were actually, was actually talking to Archie about this, and he can actually sell that idea, but then I think that he's, he's just really busy, he has to fix the code, but something like that, something, and then something, I hope it's something you know as well, Skin Ninja is something you guys can do that as well. Now, if you find a need, even a small need, just create it. Questions from the audience? Okay, come in. Please introduce yourself, please. Get to the microphone. Uh, good morning, sirs. My name is Gabriel Caimo. I'm a senior taking up business management. Uh, basically, in business management, we learn a lot about information technology and business information systems. I'm just curious, like, how can I enhance my knowledge about those topics, especially like, how I can implement information technology in my future business endeavors? Yeah, so first of all, knowing that technology helps, right? I always say geek is a special person. You all, you all have to be geeks for it. Be curious about technology is one. But what you could do in, in your field, because you're in business management, is to help the geeks also figure it out, figure out business models. The innovation is not only in code. A lot of the innovation has to do with delivery, the business model, the execution. So we have to combine both. And what you need to constantly seek is, how will it change for the better what is current? So examples of that is, what if you could give tablets to doctors so they'd be more efficient in their patient care? That's a business problem solved by technology. So that's really what we're trying to do, is to find ways to combine, you know, business leaning person, right? Who's thinking about how I can make this happen all the time. So if there's a Mark Zuckerberg somewhere at the field, you should be, you know, separate, uh, helping him to do that and, and combine. I think that's one, one aspect. Um, but yeah, uh, a techno and technology is a, just a technology until a business person turns it into business. So that's, that's my advice. I think you're as well. Uh, you find people from yes, you find people who you can work with. Most of these things are just partnerships. Find people you can work with. And the same goes for CCS. Find someone who can do the marketing for you, can do the business models for you, because I know you guys don't want to work on the financials, etc. You just want to work on your code. But I think there's a lot of potential yeah, in the university. There's, there just needs to be this place where both sides can meet and create some businesses, like, which is good. We have Innovate now, right? Where we have half of the class is CCS, half of the COB. Then I was talking with someone from Coffee Bean. He wants to turn this Coffee Bean and you want to do a startup hub. So I was thinking, yeah, let's, let's go for it. You know, I'll help there. And I want, you know, if you guys are interested, guy, yeah, um, that's where you can meet people. Thank you. Somebody in the back, please come up. Microphone over here. Do you have a question? Okay. After this. So one of the biggest challenges. Introduce yourself, please. Okay. Where are you studying? I'm Paul. I'm from Business Information Systems. Yes, I know. Yes. This is what happens when I start to become more professional. So what is the, uh, no, the biggest challenges of students? I guess we may have got the ideas. Is where do we go to next? Parang sa sanglas, may nagawa na ako or may gagawin na ako, may magkano ideas? 
Ang problem is, okay, anong bago sa tanto? Parang, sino yung nalapit sa atin? Kaya tayo nalapit para i-connect tayo dito or connect tayo doon. Which I'm curious if animal labs could do that for us. Um, so what we're doing with animal labs is just to start it. Uh, what completes Animal Labs is your input. Actually, I'm going to invite all of you to help design it. So, September 20, we're presenting it to the board and to the alumni to fund Animal Labs. Uh, but we don't want to reinvent wheels. If you guys, you know, the, you have a hacker group here that's working on that. Uh, looks like just people that have attended Startup Weekend. You, you guys kind of know what to do, right? So what we want to make it, what we want to do is take every idea of everybody's collective experience and make it LaSalle, right? And do it at Animal Lab. So uh, let me introduce a couple of people that's gonna facilitate it. So Mike Lim, uh, LaSalleite, uh, Chief Technology Officer of EXIST. So if you guys wanna ask really difficult coding things, it's Mike. And uh, Pam Belen uh, from LaSalle also on the business side of the month. So they're the prototypes, right? Uh, they're coming here every week on Fridays to actually collect input on how we can make Animal Labs as best as it can possibly be at the Henry C. Building on the 12th floor. So we're serious about making this real. Um, and making it real includes your design. Um, we're gonna seed it with a very nice building, very nice facility, dedicated Lasallian alumni mentors and funders, and we're bringing our ideas to the campus. Um, if you can help and if you're interested in helping, uh, we're setting up a Basecamp account so you guys can join it. We'll publish it later on. Uh, but let's make it ours, right? And let's make it low, let's make it indigenous innovation. I don't want to copy an idea somewhere else. We'll learn from the ideas all over the place, but make it LaSalle. Um, so but that's, that's the thought. Now, the goal for Animal Labs is, number one, the simplest thing. It's just a venue to collaborate and talk. It's a big space. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the 12th floor at the building. We get close to half of that. Facing Manila Bay, it's a big place. Um, it's got great support. Uh, we're actually building uh, the first ever uh, university cloud computing, uh, a very highly replicated uh, data storage uh, environment in that space. Um, so that's the, the starting point you're gonna have guys like Nestor Tan, alumni that have the wherewithal and the interest to help fund hanging out at Animal Labs. Uh, beyond that, the design is kind of open architecture, but so you guys can all help and design it uh, for us. And yeah, every Friday, I think Mike's planning every Friday morning to be here. Uh, maybe what we'll do is do a community brainstorm, so some of you can attend. Mamaida, I used to study. Ingatan niya yun, pero I'm Dr. Velasco, I'm Velasco from the Business, and I belong to the Decision Science and Innovation Department. So, uh, first, I would like to respond with regards to uh, the idea that was floated around where we really have to publicize what we are doing, and we really have to uh, bring out to the public the entrepreneurs that we have developed, no? so that they will be role models. And in line with this, I think uh, very few in the university knew that at this point, we are the lead institution. The La Salle University was awarded a contract to do or be a member of the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor Study. This is the biggest study worldwide that is being done on entrepreneurship in each country. So it is participated right now of more than 100 countries all over the world. And we get a 6 million peso funding just to do research on entrepreneurship. The dynamics of entrepreneurship in the Philippines for the next three years. And for this year, the focus is on youth entrepreneurship and women entrepreneurship. So LaSalle is already in the forefront of entrepreneurship study, which is not being done by any university in the Philippines. So. Uh, we hope that uh, we can showcase more entrepreneurs coming from the Rasal University. Okay, my question is, uh, sorry, no? 
holy feelings that someone so any as a can in the past. Um I was really caught, um my interest was really caught by Winston when he said that I don't know if you were able to get this phrase that he said during his presentation that before you can be a startup, you have to be a business. And uh, I would like, uh, and that is a very profound statement that has a lot of wisdom in it. And uh, I think it will, uh, it, I would like Winston to expound on it more, because this is one thing that most students forget. You have the idea, but you forgot the business model. So in the process, the idea just becomes an idea. And sad to say, it just sat in the library that you have to get permit to tap into that idea before any student can read your thesis. Sometimes it's very difficult to just pull out the thesis from the library. You know? So maybe we can uh, request Winston to expound more on that because this is something that he has done, something that made him very successful, that sometimes those short phrases, we tend to, we tend to ignore it. Eh? But these are the catch phrases no, that students like you should be able to remember when you get out of this room. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I, I remember it because it, you know, was painful <laughs> uh, experience not not to follow that model, right? There's actually, if you guys wanna even expound on this, there's a book by Collins called Good to Great, and it talks about the three concentric circles that creates a successful company. Number one is, what is your passion? Number two, the second of that concentric circle is, what is your, what drives your economic model? And the third is, what momentum will carry forward to sustainability? So if you read that book, and you should probably make it mandatory for your class, <laughs> um, it speaks about, because an idea you can get excited in. You call that a hobby if it's not a business. But if that hobby, you know, tends to get people to pay you money for it, then that hobby you can fund some more and build more stuff, right? And if you can envision that hobby to go beyond uh, the place you're working, then it becomes a business. I think that the other thing to add to that is, it's okay. ideas can, can stay as an idea. You can, you know, be excited about writing that code and then happy and have the satisfaction that you completed the code. But just say it's a code, at some point it's a feature of a product at some point. Um, the only thing that I would caution is before you launch into into a, an endeavor like fundraising, which Mona mentioned, right? Before you use your friends and families and fools money, you should be very you should make it a point that you yourself believe it's a business. Because the the one thing that entrepreneurs do is we're optimistic by the by default, right? We think everything can be done. We have a responsibility when we start taking other people's money, right? And and take that really seriously because nothing, an entrepreneur always needs backing. And the last thing you want to be, to be cautious about is to not disrupt that trust right, from investors. Not only in the Philippines, very few investors, right? And we don't want to um, break that trust. So I don't know, extra emphasis on before you call it a business, make sure you yourself believe it's a business uh, for young people, mentorship helps. And I think you guys already have in your mind how we're gonna turn this into a business. So uh, more dialogue, more conversations, um, more teachings from the professors here to do that. I also encourage actually faculties to start building your own startups as well. Start to teach entrepreneurship when you're not. Um, so, um, that's one thing that the U.S. universities try to do as well. They actually get their uh, faculties to be board advisors uh, and stuff like that. Can I add one thing more? Okay, and yes, business model and how your idea will be profitable is very important. But please don't let that what you don't know stops you. If what you have prototype or small projects, that just put it out there. No, let it go. Don't be afraid if you if it fails. There's no perfect first step. We all we all start in a simple thing. And kung di man natin paalam, so wag nat wag natin hayang di natin subukan yung unang hakbang. So my first step at my advice is that uh, just do it. 
and uh, along the way, we, we will learn no? what we need to learn. Just let go of the fear, whatever it is, just, just do it. Put it out there. There's so many things out here in the Philippines right now. Now, wala pa no 2009 or 2006. There's a lot of competition, hackathon, uh, uh, big support from IBM, Microsoft. So many things. Just be involved on that. And uh, so along the way, we will learn what we need to learn. You know, one of the questions that I often hear in, uh, from, from students, especially those that uh, finish, is that this dilemma that they, that they face. Should I get a job and work on my idea at night and on weekends and maybe it will, and then maybe I'll, I'll shift to that? Or do you recommend really focus on that idea and work on it, don't work first? That's, uh, that's a question we hear often from, uh, from students and your, your, your comments on that, please. So this is actually a question I asked, and I was under idea space, and I was talking to Earl Valencia, and he had mentioned. So I was asking him, should I actually, right after graduation, should I work on this idea, or should I go for um, experience first? Should I go for corporate? And the thing he said was, it was just really practical, I guess. So if your idea is good for the next two to three years only, if that's how long it's gonna take, or if that's how long it's gonna run, work on it already. But if you think your startup or your idea is going to be for a five to ten year thing, go work first in corporate. And then when you figure out that you're, you got experience, a bit more experience, you have a bit more structure and personality and creativity, and then you can work on your idea. So I think that's my, that was the answer I got from the so the step I did take uh, is um, it really has to do with when you feel like you want to acquire a certain knowledge and what your expertise that you want to build for yourself. Um, I started a business after I graduated at Casal. Um, I actually uh, put together a plan that correlates the diagnostics and the procedures of medical um, processes so you can build automatically over the internet. And that's that idea which did turn into a business fail and I decided that if I wanted to be the best at my craft which is to develop IT enterprise technology that I should work at Intel and you know I tried about 20 times to get into only Intel architecture labs right and while I ended up working for a big company I thought that that whole process of getting to Intel was entrepreneurial and I did learn five years and then you know it, you can, you can argue one or the other. If I had built my startup, would I have gotten to Blue Code sooner? Or if I had a, a, acquiring the skills that Intel got me to build to Blue Code more successful, and I still think about that every now and then. But I think the fundamental, the, the key difference there was that uh, an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur. Like what you said, whatever I don't have, I will find, <laughs> right? And if I'm really passionate about my intent, Right? Even if, even if I, you know, sometimes you deal with things that says, I don't know what I don't know. But if your passion is there and acquiring what you need can be done as a startup, right? And just go for it. And a lot of people did that, Zuckerberg and those guys. Or you go back to the best of breed of the space you want to be in. If you want to build the next Microsoft, go work at Microsoft and then beat them afterwards, right? You can do that too, right? So. There's no set formula. Uh, I think it's really, it's more important to seek your inner passion. What are you willing to do for yourself? And to add one, uh, yeah, uh, there's no uh, correct formula. I believe we all have different uh, aspects in facing risk, and that could be the answer if you want to take a job while doing your startup, or just focusing on your startup. If you are the person who wants to face risk uh, in spite of everything, if that challenge you, if that risk can take you to the next level, well, don't take a job, just do your startup. But if you're a startup that can do do more better if you're on the, the risk of, if you're in the state of risk, well, I guess you should maintain that moment of that state. 
So it depends on on uh, different kind of ano natin, uh, temperament or ano. Uh, yeah, just. deal with naysayers. I know that in my life, I've heard it even from my family, anak, wag na lang, mag lawyer ka na lang, wag ng teacher, or, you know, do something else, just not that. How do you personally deal with naysayers, and how do you cultivate a good support system for your small but bright ideas? Um, I just want to share our, our experience in startup weekend. We came in to start a weekend having the idea of food list, which was um, a place where people can um, record their readings and for one person online. And then during the weekend, well, mentors came in, some said, oh, th um, this LG is great, you should make this a mobile app. And then, and then another mentor came in, oh, this is great, you should uh, make it a website. Don't, don't make it a mobile app at, at all. So we were like, what? And then um, um, there were um, seminars about how to make a business model. And then we 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 thought about, we don't have a business model yet. So we thought about making um, paid um, greetings or or having artwork at the back and then paying for the team, whatever. And then we, we apparently we pivoted to um, a lot, to a lot of, Many of ways, many of um, ways in the, in the while we were in, in the weekend, and in the end, what happened was we just scratched everything, <laughs> and then we we stuck to the core idea. So what I um, for me just just have a core and just um, stick stick to it. If you think that's good, just just like what you said, just do it, and yeah, if if. If people say that it's bad or it's, it's, it's not going to work, I mean, I think it's pretty it's going to work, so I'm going to just take it and I'm going to fight for it. I think you have to understand the context of who's saying no, like, because no is really un unconverted, yes, uh, at the moment. But, you know, people say no, and if, if they're just saying no uninformed, you don't, you can disregard that. But some people say no for the right reasons as, as well. Uh, so either you try to convince that person, or you take that input. But uh, you have to qualify who's saying no. I think it would be the addition to that statement. Wow, good. Um, I'll start with you first, and then next the other guy with the glasses in the back. Please, <coughs> just uh, get on deck so you can cover the target. What are the biggest challenges when starting a startup? Like, actually, it's a fear in the world. Uh, I mean, what are the possible things that may happen that um, you could advise people since we really don't know what to expect? Um. Startup is taking risks. So the biggest fear, at least for me, was, uh, and this is the, goes to the advice is, if you're, wrong, if you're young, start early. Because at some point in your life, like when I was at Intel, I'm already close to a vice president, right? And it gets to a point where you're afraid to fail. So you become your own worst enemy because you've gotten to that point already, you become risk averse. My, my advice, is to start early and to start often, that's what he said. Because that will remove the fear. It's like working out, you know, when, when you're working out, lifting weights become easier. And this is really why there's a thrust by IBM, as an example, there's a lot of encouragement in LaSalle to do in-campus incubation. That's what we're trying to do at Animal Labs. So I get to start early and start often. Uh, I think the best advice is don't be afraid to fail. But also define failure and define the next iteration. But on, start early, start often. You guys are doing your great examples here in Sari uh, that have done that. There's Jolo. Um, who knows Unix, Santana? Santana? You guys know Unix? 
So we funded orchestra. I funded orchestra, right? So we're actually on a board meeting on Friday. Do you guys know Raymond? Rosario Del Rosario. Like these are the last slides that actually I don't know if you know their story, but in the in the in the spirit of sharing Lasallian stories, you know Unix worked for Microsoft. And Unix worked at Microsoft for a while, acquired the skills of productization which Microsoft's good at. Uh, but you know what she did was she left a very lucrative job. Uh, they're living out of their own savings, and uh, they believe in what they what they had. Uh, there were a lot of naysayers. And most recently, they got a grant from the OSD for $43,000. And they got funded by a few of the uh, angel network participants here in the Philippines. So they started early, they started off, and they stuck with it. And pretty soon, they probably have the only uh, big data analytics for media and broadcast here in the Philippines. So I guess a lot of these examples, we, we need to publish this at Nasan. Nusa, who's in journalism here? <laughs> But you have a lot of success. You have, you know, you have a lot of mini mini pakeos running around. Yeah, uh, inter entrepreneurship is a fast-paced uh, lifestyle. Or uh, for me, the most challenges uh, that I face is that the 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 what you call this one the changing of mindset from a te technical person into a business person because we are all trained to be. To be more technical when we're still working on our idea, but along the way, in a very fast, fast pace, we need to acquire the knowledge, the mindset of managing, managing people, managing your finances, and so many other stuff. And that mo, in that state, is a very one of uh, very challenging state that I encounter in building my company and my my startup. So for me, if you face that state, just just dig your heels down and uh, understand that it's all part of the process. Good advice, we start a thing about getting started soon. Now that you said start early. <laughs> we have another question here. Hi, I'm James, I'm from the College of Business. So I have a month old startup and it's, uh, it's right in the middle of a social network and the professional network. Um, just have a question. With all the um, recent happenings in the startup world, like there's this blog that's called My um, My Startup Has 30 Days to Live, and um, like with all the different approaches of the local incubators and accelerators, like Launch Garage and stuff, how do I know if it's better to join an, an accelerator or continue bootstrapping my startup since it's just a month old and we're building the prototype? Things? Uh, do you want an honest answer or no? <laughs> uh, the one thing I wanted to share is that life becomes easier if you belong to a community, right? And there's a lot of you that are entrepreneurs. And if if you take charge amongst yourself and form an entrepreneurship community of La Salle, help each other out, that's probably more help than you're going to get from incubators, accelerators, that kind of stuff. Right, because peer level mentorship is more, sometimes because when you're CEO, it's really hard to tell your team I'm having a problem. You're supposed to be the source of strength, right? And you need to talk to other CEOs that have the same problem as you, right? That is only concerned about helping a friend with no agenda because I'm not getting more equity if I help you out or, right, I can put my, my logo under your company or, Right, so all the, all the accelerators, uh, bootstrap agents, and all that stuff help in general, but there's no replacement to a very solid entrepreneur network. And if you go back to when this all started in Silicon Valley, before everybody pretended what it means, it really just meant a few geeks from the homebrew computer club trying to do something nobody's ever done before, and they're all scared and they hung out you know, amongst themselves and created something different. A third party is not prescribing your success. It's not Globe's formula, it's not PLDD's formula, right? it's your formula that will carry you through. Along the way, you'll get friends. IBM will be your friend, Microsoft will be your friend, 
venture capitalists will be your friends sometimes and your foes sometimes. Um, but if you really guys really want to help yourselves, build your own community. Uh, that is the best thing I can I can share with everyone. It works and it's empowering. Right? You gain confidence that way. Kaya ko na help out, invite mentors, but, but you know take take charge of that. to the question of Pona. How to establish that support system? Somebody's gonna carry that ball here. Carry that ball and run with it here at Nassau. The support system, group of entrepreneurs, etc. So we'll, uh, we'll work on that for that answer. We haven't heard from anyone up here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, these are the coders. But that's, that's the... You guys should raise their hands when we still ask about Java and Ruby and uh, who was it that said if if you're gonna study anything, study coding above all? Was that Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or so I got a question. <laughs> Yes, information systems. Uh, as an entrepreneur, we third, uh, tend to think of the uh, long term. So yes, we may have a good idea, we may have a successful startup, but how do we maintain the sustainability of the idea? Knowing that uh, technolo technology changes and as well as more great ideas are out there. Uh, you have